So there is a set of tables that you can look up that will tell you what the shear force or bending moment is um, for loads such as um, a uniform uh, distributed load. So um, let's see how, how they might derive that. So let, let's say we have a load here of W kilonewtons per meter. So that's, you know, you know, that could be something like, um, you know, something like 10 kilonewtons per meter. Okay. So, uh, we know then that the total, the total load is equal to whatever this value W is times the length. Okay, so you know if that distance was four meters, this was ten kilonewtons per meter, then it'd be ten multiplied by four. So we're saying that's the same as W by L. So the total load is W by L. And we saw, oh well, maybe we didn't see, but if we have a a load like this, it will act through the centroid here, which would be somewhere in between. So it acts through the middle. So if we have um, WL kilonewtons, or let's let's say it was 40 kilonewtons, then the reaction forces, because this is acting through the center, will be the same at reaction force one and reaction force two. So if that was 40, we would say that's 20 and that's 20, okay? Um, so generically, we'd say the reaction forces is equal to WL all over two. Now, if I want to get the uh, shear force, I would say, you know, if I pick any point, and let maybe maybe I change color here. You know, if I pick a point, um, say here. So what would I, what would, I, would the forces be? So we look at everything to the to the left of this point. So this point is the reaction. So the shear force is equal to the reaction force, which is W L over two minus. Well, let's this let this distance here. Let that be x. So um, the total, if this is W kilonewtons per meter, then the load will be W X. And that acts um, at a distance uh, X over two, but that is the load, it's W W X. Now, if I wanted to get the bending moment, I'm just gonna change the, um, change the uh, ink color here. Let's go for uh, black. If I want to get the bending moment at this distance, so the bending moment, I'm going to say that is W L over two. Okay, that's that force there by this distance X minus. Well, what's coming down is W X, and that is going to be multiplied by the distance. So it's acting through the centroid of of whatever this is. And that would be x over two. So the bending moment is equal to WL over two x minus um, WX squared over two. So that's what the shear force is. And that's what the bending moment is at any distance x. Uh, from from this point. Okay, but if we want to get the um, maximum bending moment, uh, we would differentiate it. So we know at a maximum point, uh, dm dx is going to be equal to zero. So let's differentiate that. So, so dm dx is equal to uh, wl over two minus uh, becomes WX.
and we're going to say that that's equal to zero at the maximum point. So therefore, WL over two is equal to WX. And if we uh, divide by W, we can say the bending moment is at its max. At, so we're going to cancel that and that at x equal to l over 2. So that makes sense. Okay, so the bending moment will be at its maximum at this point here. Okay, so what will that bending moment be? So we'll throw x back into, into this equation here. So the bending moment, so the bending moment is equal to WL over 2 times x. And in this case, x is going to be L over 2 because that's where it's at its maximum. Minus W times x squared over 2. So instead of x squared, we're going to put in L over 2. And that's equal to WL squared all over 4 minus WL squared all over 8. And that's equal to WL squared all over 8. So for a quarter minus an 8, which is an 8. So the maximum bending moment is equal to WL squared over 8. And that's a value that you can look up in tables.